another episode here talking tactics with Darnish. And as I said, we want to do this pretty regularly throughout the season now. So hopefully we can keep this up. And uh, I think for the first time in three episodes, maybe four, we're getting to talk about a win as well. What, what United have done that <laughs> resulted in, in winning a game of football. Can you believe it? So that is good news. That is, uh, is very good news. That is something we like. And uh, hopefully that we get to see more of, and um, and so yeah, we we figured we'd do this on um, live on the on the uh, kind of the watch along platform, big up that I use. Um, this will come on if you're watching us on YouTube as well. It'll obviously be there, but you're welcome to come join on the watch along channel next time as well if you would like. And we're doing that so we can use this this nifty uh, this nifty tactics board here that we want to do, and. Um, so that way, when when we're talking about all the different things that uh, the different ideas, the different concepts, we can at least show them, and I think it would make it a little bit nicer. So first and foremost, how are you doing, Darnish? Good, um, good, good win on the weekend. I feel like when things happen on the weekend, there's like two, three days of everybody digesting it and analyzing it until the yes. next game. So we only literally have till tomorrow with the, with the European schedule. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, it's like one or two days and then, you know, Real Madrid stuff and, and this, that, the yep. other. But I, I feel good. I have some thoughts on the game and I have some overriding thoughts in terms of where we might go um, in, in the season because we're getting a clearer picture. Uh, it's half pessimistic and half optimistic, but I, I, think, I, I think it's more realistic in the fact that like the, the, to, just to give an opening summary, just because we're it's it's very early, but I'll, I'll give you my take now. Yep. Where I think personally things could change. I think this team is is going to be maybe good enough to beat teams in the bottom half of the Premier League, but only win by a nose hair. So like mm. we're beating only Brentford by a nose hair. Although look, we deserve to win. We're only beating Fulham by a nose hair again. Deserve to win. Um, beat Southampton pretty comprehensively because we took our chances, unlucky against Brighton. Um, and then against the big teams, because it feels like, number one, he's not going to change his tactics. Um, and we know what to expect, which is if, it, if it's at home, we're going to press them. And if we press them, there's holes in our press. Or um, we do what we did away against Villa, where it's compact, uh, and he, he plays for a draw. To me and to my eyes, that's kind of the best we can hope for this season because it feels like they're, they're sticking with him for better or for worse and because they're yep. kind of like, oh, we're just kind of here now. We don't want to get rid of him. It's our first season. So that's the best that we can hope for. And it, it sounds a bit pessimistic, but if you can just beat the teams at the bottom of half, even if it is by a nose tear, what you might start to do is create some momentum. And that's that's why this team under under Ten Hag in 2022-2023 got third, got to the Champions League, went very far in Europa League, got to an FA Cup final. It was a very successful season. The momentum carried that team probably uh, ahead of where it should have been. But sure. that, that's maybe what a Ten Hag United team needs is, is a little bit of overachieving because there isn't enough control developed to go to a Tottenham or a Liverpool and to dictate games, and there might not be enough control yet to comprehensively beat the teams in the bottom half. So if you can start to put, put wins together, um, things might change. But I feel like I feel like that's as good as it's going to get this season. As, as bad as it sounds, even though we, we've just won, I, I yeah. feel like that's kind of where we are. And the international break has given us... I think we've got an answer now. I think it, I think it will be him this season. Um yeah, I see them changing. Yeah, well, and we and I know we spoke about that a bit in our last one on that one that Wednesday, and and I said, you know, as far as I was hearing, I'd be surprised if anything actually changes, you know, with the manager side of things, and that he's going to get more time. and And I think that it's it's we've we've had time. I know that I've had time to kind of digest it and look at it and say, all right, well, if it is going to be Ten Hag right now, at least for the foreseeable, and and quite frankly. If it isn't, it's probably going to be Rude Van Nistelrooy, and I know that people would be more excited about that at this point in time, but it's not going to change that much. 
-hmm. you know, in, in an interim basis, it's, you don't get that many changes. A lot of times it's just about putting players in the positions that, you know, you see them best in and kind of working it through, which is, which is fair <laughs> enough. Um, but I think that, that, you know, as it says, it gives us, well, what could we take as a positive from this? Well, if there really is a, a, a game model we want to work towards, some sort of a style that we really want to play overall, my hope is, and what I've been saying recently to try to be a, a little more positive myself about it, is that um, we will be able to put the right players on the, on the field get them a lot of minutes together to build chemistry. And, and as you say, sometimes that can build the momentum together too, because we have a lot of really good players, right? We have a lot of yeah. really talented players. And when I you look at it, where the frustration comes from, I think right. that's, where, that's where it comes from when, and I think this weekend was important because Fernandez assist, Rashford assist, Hoyland goal, Ganacho goal. And you go, yes. but that's exactly what you would want. Yeah. From. Yep, I I exactly that. And so if we have a positive that we can continue to build relationships, get more players involved when the Euro comes back, that he can get into the team and start playing as a center back, that, you know, we can get get everybody we need going. And, and we'll talk about some of the fit of, of all of these players and how it'll work. Um, and if we can at least climb the table a little and win these little games and start to control those, you know, then at least it's it's. I think it can give us a foundation, even if, you know, okay, end of some end of the year, we're back in a situation where it's extremely likely we change the managers and we go for somebody who's going to be there for three to four years. There may be some foundations to build off of. Um, and one of my hopes is that we don't play like pure survival football. And that with Ten Hag, not, if he's not under pressure, that we won't play pure survival football because mm. when we play pure survival football, we're not really making progress for long-term goals, long-term game models, or anything like that. And and I think about um, and I think about uh, this, and and we talk about the personnel in a minute about Casemiro and Eriksson about. They're not going to be here in the long run. They're not a part mm -hmm. of the long term, and that is one thing we've got to figure out how to do and what to do is how do we how do we win without having Ericsson and Bruno on the pitch at the same time? Because Ericsson's gone in summer, and maybe even sooner than that. Um, and he thought he was gone last year. And what we don't want to have is another one of these things like with McTominay, where he wasn't supposed to be important and he was nearly sold. And then he became this key player and then he's gone anyway. And we don't have him. And and now it's like, what do you do with that? Every game. Exactly. So we don't want to have that again. So hopefully under less pressure, we can, we can integrate and implement more of a long-term plan. So let, let's talk about, give me, give me, yeah, give me an answer on that. And then we'll, we'll pull up the board here. Yeah. The answer on the last question. Just your thought on that on that point in general. I mean, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, it's not um, – it's confusing because Casemiro – I think Ericsson's played – started the last – what is it, seven games now? Yeah. He'll probably, probably start the eighth because Fernandez is out. Yes, pretty <laughs> so, much has to, uh, you know, so. <laughs> and he's, he's playing well. That's the thing. He, he's yeah. actually playing well, so I don't know what's what's new. But it, I, I agree in that if – if he can play football that isn't essentially Allardyce or relegation football, where it's like football against Villa, or uh, that result was clearly because he was he, that that was him clearly saying, "Look, I am under pressure. I yeah. need a better result here. I cannot lose." Yeah. He couldn't have, right. he couldn't have ever lost going into that meeting. Um, but if it's if they can get into a place, the next the next. Games before the international break are crucial, um, and I think this win was actually really crucial because he he needed a win. But that that win has kind of lifted the fact that he yeah. he he's number one. He's not going to play pressure football now. He's not going to play survival football, and he might get into a place now where they can hopefully get some points on the board and start to build momentum, and then hopefully make this season somewhat successful regardless of whether he's here or not because yeah. like nobody i i don't even even though we know it's an, it's season one for this new ownership nobody wants to go into a season and go oh let's just write it off 
No, mm-hmm. not by the way, what? Eight games in, and we're still in yep. the Europa League, we're still in the Carling Cup, we're still in the FA Cup, and yep. it's very, very early in, in the Premier League. Yep. Um, I just I just have this overarching dark cloud saying this is like as good as it's gonna get, and he's yeah. moving players around because he kind of has to, and he kind of has to play Ericsson, and he can't build something new and interesting just because he's also in a spot now where I think he's between a rock and a hard place because he knows how much pressure he's under. Yeah, right? exactly. We all know that there's always pressure. You know, you have to win. I, I mean, you know, yeah. it's like Real Madrid, right? You have to win. Except those guys, they're just and they don't have the pressure of winning on them. It's like it's like they can take that pressure of winning, put it into a cup, and drink it up, and it gives them that extra emphasis. Whereas it feels like for United, it's more of a burden for the players rather than something that they can beat your chest from. And, yep. and you kind of don't want that. But again, we'll deal with things game by game. This one was a, this one was a crucial win. And then if they can go to Fenerbahce and get another, you never know. Um, exactly. The fixture list is easier now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as the question asked, does not being under pressure and not playing survival football mean things will be here next season? And Yes and no. It doesn't really matter. The way that they're going to approach this as the ownership is they're not going to, they're not going to tell Ten Hag, look, you have two games to save your job, or you've got, you know, you've got to do this to save your job or something, because they don't want him to make those choices that are based on like what happened with Villa. Like I can tell you that it was sort of odd because from from my standing and the things I was hearing before even the meeting and everything, they had Jim Ratcliffe had a meeting with with uh ten hog just talked with ten hog and said look and and basically at that time he left that meeting feeling i'm all good whether he was or he wasn't doesn't really matter he left that meeting feeling i'm all good i'm just gonna do my football talking about yeah yeah he left that meeting feeling that way and 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 i know that sir jim has huge doubts but he but ten hog left that meeting feeling good and so i think that is on purpose the point is we don't want you to sit there and play survival football. You know, that's not what we're looking for. That doesn't do anything for us. It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for everyone. We want you to play the football that is going to progress us towards where we want to get to in this long-term plan to, to compete for titles and win the league. So, well, let's, let's look at Brentford. Let's look at Brentford and, and see yeah. it. And, and, um, and I think we'll, we, what we can do here is we can talk about, you know, what was, um, we could talk about um, in general, maybe. It, let me know if you want me to do it where, you know, like I could take Brentford off the screen just so we can talk about their positions or or however you want, would want to do it first. But I guess, you know, how did we set up for Brentford? I wouldn't say different because it wasn't that different. No. But one, one thing I would note is that it did feel like one, one positive – that that I took away, and and maybe we could talk about this because I think this is this is maybe the 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 good thing is Garnacho on the left here with Lissandro playing that left left back as a left footer um, wasn't sitting in here pushing Garnacho out to the touchline, correct? Garnacho got a lot of touches like right around this this part of the pitch, if I'm not mistaken. And maybe it would be easier for just the, the start of this to, to remove to remove Brentford. But it felt like, you know, when we were getting in there, that it was a, almost like the shape was just how we started, <laughs> you know, for most of yeah. the game. It wasn't really like anything crazy. What what do you think? What, was that different a little bit? I think if you you want to just move Dallow into the half space there, up here, yeah, and then move Rashford a little bit wider, but like inside at the same time. So I think this is what, uh, the, 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 to me, the, the, this is the biggest change if there was one that I saw in the second half because the second half was just better in terms of Brent Brentford are very good at duels, and that's yeah. a big thing in football. That's aerial duels, you know, fifty fifties. Um, a little shove when you're tackling, being really bloody hard in the tackle. Brentford are really, really good at that. I remember a, a quote from Jurgen Klopp, I think last season or the season before, saying, I'm so proud of my team because of how much we competed against them. Because they're really yeah. good at that. It's a really physical team, Brentford. They're all six footers as well. You know, Ethan Pink, yeah. Big, yeah. Collins, Ayer, especially at the back. 
So I'm, I'm very happy with how everybody competed. But the what, what I saw in terms of a, lo- a large part of the success of why United were getting more um, joy in attack was there was there was one move where I was like, this just sums it up perfectly what we're doing. So if Dal- what, what happening what was happening was there was a three at the back, two in midfield. Evans, Martinez, mm-hmm. Delict, Casemiro, and Eriksson in, in midfield. Now, Brent, Brentford pressed with four players or sometimes five players. So it basically meant that they couldn't knock it into Eriksson and they couldn't knock it into Casemiro. But what was happening was they could knock it into Dallo. So when, whenever they knocked it into Dallo, right. it, it forced a Brentford defender, um, whether it was um, Collins or whether it was Pinnock, or whether it was one of the midfielders that had to drop in and come across, it forced them to push up really hard on Dallo. But Dallo could right. either take the ball, trap it, turn and move, or head it away, or head it down for Fernandez um, or Ericsson. There was one move in particular where I was like, this is working. Onana would knock it over Brentford's press, which I think yep. is another good thing that United are doing now. They're using Onana a lot more. So I say yeah. it was a three-two at the back, but sometimes that. it was a lot more like a, a four-two or a three-two with Martinez yes. pushing up. Because yeah. finally they've realized that Onana's long kicking is actually good. So yeah. with Onana pushed up, sometimes they'd knock it over the top of Brentford's press. And this is where we saw that other chance as well. Remember when Dallow right, was in Right, to Dallo, yeah. Yeah, directly just over their press. But Onana would knock it into Dallow, and that would force either Aya or Pinnock to come closer. So what you do then is you're dragging a Brentford defender as close as possible inside the United's half. And then you mm-hmm. you've, so you've basically drag the a defender all the way in. Now, at yep. the same time as well, that's happening. And say Dallo gets gets on the end of it, he gives it into Fernandez. Hoyland, who grew into the game, by the way, he stopped wrestling with, with defenders. He yeah. said it himself. He, he said like, that himself. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, dude, bingo, hip presser. Yeah. We got something, man. Um, <laughs> Because he grew into the game of where, and by the way, it's it's not it's not easy to wrestle with Brentford defenders. They're, they're physical. Any, yep. any any big defender in the Premier League is hard, but Brentford are, uh, Brentford are pretty tough. Hoyland said he stopped wrestling and he started retrieving the ball. So whenever they knocked it down to him, and he'd sort of he'd hold Pinnock uh, with his own two arms. So all of a sudden, Pinnock is pinned pinned back into wherever Hoyland is. And another another defender, be it Collins or Dallo or Aya, whichever one, mm-hmm. or maybe even a midfielder, is pinned because Dallo is is now the out ball from from defense. Right. Someone gets so stuck, as yeah. as this is happening, you either get it to Dallo or you get it to Hoyland. They can knock it down to either Fernandez or Eriksson, and then boom, wide left to Garnacho, who kept feeding the ball because Garnacho's yeah. he's like an old school United winger. He really is. He's like Beckham or Giggs, where it's like my job is to be a problem. And my job is to cause trouble on whichever way yeah. I'm on. I don't care if I take you on and you tackle me. If I get the ball, I'm doing it again. And then what happened was because there was a defender pinned to wherever Dallow or Hoyland was, there was an overload on Ganacho's side, or he was one right. on one. And being one on one against Alejandro Ganacho is a problem for defenders. Yeah. Um, so then we saw, you know, then we would use either see Martinez overlap on that side or we would see Ericsson, Casemiro, or Fernandez overlap on that side, which right. is why we had this this five minute spell where we could we kept knocking into the six yard area, like right. screaming, and we were like saying, pinning them back in here at this point in time, right? Yeah, but I, I kept yeah. screaming at my screen saying, "Get get into the six yard area!" I bet Van Nistra right. was on the touchline going, "I bet I would have scored by now." But even still, <laughs> that, that yeah. was that was where we were getting the success because. Hoyland had finally figured out that, okay, stop grappling with these guys and whinging at the ref every two minutes. Instead, grapple with them, bring them in close to the United, to close to the, our own half, retrieve yep. the ball, bring other players in. Or Dallo himself was going, okay, I, the, you know, Evans, Dilek, Martinez, Ericsson, and Casemiro, the ball is marked to them, but I am the out ball. If you give it to me, I'm going to head it on or retrieve it and then commit another Brentford player. What was happening at this time as well is, and United are doing this a lot more this season. This is one thing that's it's a very positive thing that's gotten lost, um, and it's changed in the in the build up. Ganacho or Rashford are dropping deeper in build up. Yeah. So 
I, I spoke about the three two of uh, the the three and the two of Martinez and Eriksson in midfield. Yep. What tends to happen when they're marked up is Rashford or Ganacho will drop deeper into the build up. When this happens, um, a defender from the opposition goes with them. So mm-hmm. then again, it's it's this whole thing of you you commit players from the opposition because you drag them closer to your own half. Right. And Correct. Yeah. This, Gaps open up into their own def- into the opposition's defense, which allows Ericsson, Fernandez, or Hoyland to to go into. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes it makes a lot of sense. So, you know, looking at your your thread, for example, because yeah. um, it makes a lot of sense there. You know, starting with, you know, maybe maybe looking at it in a, in a vein here of where it wasn't working in the first half with the press. And um, where sometimes it's a little bit issue, a little bit of an issue. I think, you know, correct me if I'm I'm wrong on this, but you know, where the way that we tend to press kind of looks like this, right? Um, is we we go into this. It's it's sometimes a four four two, sometimes a four two four. Kind of depends where our wingers are at each at either point in time, and um, and from from looking at your pictures, like. What's the what's the issue here? Obviously, it's 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 mm-hmm. it's a bit more forward. All of this is is a bit is a bit higher up the pitch. But I want yeah, to kind of demonstrate it. Grab the forwards and the midfielders and just kind of leave, you know, push Damsgaard and Lewis Potter and Embuemo away right. into the, the other half. Yeah. So um, yeah. So they're Do kind that. of they're kind of doing this right, like they're because yeah. I, I think I, where I, we were where we were struggling, or at least as I as I can gather it is that um just to see if i can explain this a little bit because i think i was understanding your thread kind of the issue is that we're pushing up with like four against four on their back line in in many instances like when you look at it by the numbers because fernandez is stepping up into into kind of like a, as a forward right when when we're pressing he's on almost the same line as hoyland most of the time um and I noted that what you were talking about is is essentially here, you would end up with this issue. That's the Maybe it was on, on the, the left problem, or the yeah. right, but you'd mm-hmm. end up with three Brentford forwards against two or midfielders rather against two United midfielders. So if they can beat this first line of the press, you know, someone can drag Ericsson around or and, yeah. and have it a free man, or someone could drag Casemiro around. And there's Absolutely. a free man, like at any given time. Um, that's what I was noticing: is that this this tends to be where somebody is covering two players, right? Because we saw, like against Liverpool, you I, I remember you pointed this out: is that when Fernandez would come up, they would have another kind of midfielder drop in here. So yes. now Fernandez has to be, you know, if the ball is moving around, uh, these guys might be covered. But this free man um, is available, there's, right? <laughs> there's always, yes. There's always so there's always um, a three v two in the middle. Yes. So either Damsgaard would be marked by uh, so Casemiro not is it was always outnumbered. He was yes he kept, kept looking to his left and right because Norgard and Damsgaard were in between him. So. The other problem is as well is at this point Hoyland is pressing the keeper. Um, yes. Rashford is on Collins, Ganacho is on Vandenberg, Fernandez is on uh, Pinnock. So it's kind of even flipped like this. At one yeah, point. yeah. So in the, in the image what, that we're seeing. So what what te- what's tending to happen here is because they press so high on the um, the keeper. So Hoyland is pressing Flecken there. Fernandez is on Pinnock. What tends yeah. to happen is because the, the ball on the left is free, Ericsson has to and this is I not saw enough. this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ericsson has to would... then go across to the fullback. And then in the middle there, you can see Casemiro's completely overloaded. Yeah. So and this Fernandez is where you get these, right. these gaps, right? Like yeah, these, yeah, of these, these Fernandez huge... is okay. he's kind of <laughs> okay in terms of marking Yanel. But yeah. he's not okay in terms of marking Norgard. And it's because right. he can because cut this they don't off, press but... so high. So whenever Fernandez goes to press the keeper, and everybody has to join in with him, but there's an overload in behind him. Um, 
when Casemiro and Damsgaard and Nogal are there. The the good thing about this, so this is this is the bad thing that, that that's that's what kept happening in the first half. There was always a plus one in midfield for Brentford, and it happened yeah. against Brentford, happened against Liverpool, happened against Tottenham. They, once United press the goalkeeper, that's when I think the opposition sends, okay, we can actually play through them now because there's problems in the structure. The good thing, and I'm hoping and praying this is what, what happens, is this there was instances where this changed in the second half. Whether he told them to do this, I don't know. If 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 it was in in my thread, if you want to go lower to like where it says United are a much more compact team in the first image, then we can go from there. Um, yeah. The difference was United are pressing in a four-two, so. Right. For, but the key was Fernandez and Hoyland. They're not really pressing the centre backs anymore. They're kind of just sitting off. And when they do sit off, it makes United a much more of a compact team. So it was uh, Ganacho, Casemiro, Eriksson, and Rashford, and then just ahead of them Bruno and Hoyland. But they're sat, they're kind of sat just in front. They're not marking Collins, or they're, and they're not marking um, Pinnock. They're naturally just close to Yanel and I think like Damsgaard. Norgaard is like near Casemiro, but that's okay now because there's not really a route through in the middle because they're just kind of sat off. So so you're saying when when we, they went more compact, it was just a little bit yeah, more like this, exactly right? Like, like just this. not not getting all the way up there, but just kind of cutting off these angles. So just, so exactly just near right. them. So they could that's pass exactly it around right. like here. You know, the, the, they could pass it around here all they want, but it's not going anywhere else. Yes, in, in you, essence. Can, see, you yeah. can see from that image, it's a lot more compact yeah. as well in the middle. Yeah, like you're not going to pass it there to your midfielder because Hoyland, instead of pressing Collins, he's now kind of close to Yano. Uh, Fernandez, instead of pressing Collins, Pinnock or Flecken, is kind of close to Yano, and yeah. it leaves Casemiro not outnumbered as well. And then another right. thing that was happening that was good. Um, was sometimes Ganacho or Rashford would tuck in. Um, right. So if if Damsgaard moves like a little bit to the right, Rashford is going to tuck in and go to Damsgaard. Right. If, if, they play, if they play to Ayer there, that's all right because Rashford is yes. not, he's not in the worst position to go across. But the key thing is it's out wide. You Correct. Not, not through the middle. In the middle. Absolutely yeah. not. It's a hazard to concede space in the middle of the park. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So, so let me ask you a question. Okay. Let me ask you a question. And yeah, I understand. I, I, for what it's worth, they're, they're going to work on changing, being able to change the colors as well <laughs> from the default. So yeah. it's a little easier to see the difference than that is something they do. They're aware of. So a lot of teams do press pretty high. And one of the things I think was even noted is that like, you know, when, when Liverpool press high, um, they'll kind of, they, they've at times pressed in the same shape almost the same structure of like a a four to four but one one of the things i noticed and you tell me what you think about this whether this is whether this is correct or not it's just something that i've perceived is that if you wanted to to press this high right it's not necessarily that you have to cover every player right because the goal is obviously you're you're taking a risk here you're making mm -hmm. a gamble and you're saying well if if hoyland is pressing the keeper at the right angle he is not going to be able to make this pass over them to these free midfielder because you're kind of cutting the angle off there, even though you aren't really marking those players, right? And 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 one of the things that um that that I saw, let's see, how did how did you have it? It was something like this at that time. Although it doesn't really matter which side Bruno and, and Rashford are on, for example. Um, you have these, yeah, you have these midfielders, but I you know like. One of the things that I've seen, and and like against Fulham, for example, in the first part of the, in the first part of the, um, in the in the first game of the season when Mason Mount was playing, and we pressed, we would force them very often into making, from pressing the keeper, we force them very often to making this pass, but he yeah. was so tight, yeah, and so energetic that he would win the ball here, or he would yeah. force them, and or he would pin them even further. You know, because then you're forward, they get it out here, you trap them, and they've got to kick the ball out or they go long and they lose it, right? 
the, one of the things that I've seen, and this is my concern specifically with Christian Eriksen, is, is when I watched the first half, when this would happen, he's always he's two steps lot, behind. Yeah. He he's was, always he was two not, steps late to get out. Up. He was not following Yeah. Up. But sometimes, right. so, go ahead. Sometimes, like, Casemiro would have no guard and yeah. literally either side of him. And I'd be yes, like, like this here. you got to follow up. If, yeah. if, the, if the ball is free on the right fullback or whichever side they're playing on, the opposite flank, the fullback yeah. is free. Okay, fine. Leave him free. you got to back up um, that, mid, that midfielder and you can't have a plus one. If he's going to do a hero ball to the other fullback, fine. When he does that, everybody will push up to the other side. Yeah. But yeah. Back, there can't be a plus one in the middle of the pitch. Well, th that's what I'm looking at is that like I, I noticed that in the first half, at least when we were trying to press really high, this ball would come out and where Ericsson could be here to, to you know, because he, he could block the pass this way if he's in the right position and not give the free man, you know, block this angle to the free man. He's, he's, he's behind the play. Yeah. So then whoever is getting it is able to, to move around, manipulate the press and, and find the extra man because you're pressing the keeper they're able to find the extra man every time and um and that it's it's slow and 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 we've seen like when when liverpool press really high they somehow get there you know like they can press everybody because you know gravenberg and shawbasly and McAllister and everybody are so yeah. fast and they're so aggressive that like they'll get here for this pass. They will get there and they will make it work. And it's almost like they can, you know, it, it makes sense, right? Because the whole point of a, of a press is, you know, you're not going to have more people, but you can cut off the angles and force them into, you know, those kind of errors, which, which we did with Mason Mount against Fulham. But it seems like without Mason Mount, we can't, we don't have, we, no. with Ericsson, we don't have the energy to 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 like outwork the other team like like a Liverpool does or an Arsenal does or a City does when they press high. But at the same time, the pressing structure should not rely on one player being very good without the ball correct, just to, correct. to work. Yeah. Uh, the problem is they go to press the keeper, and when they go to press the keeper, like say a Fernandez or a Hoyland goes to press the keeper, I'm like, what are you doing? Okay, you know, right. you, you, you're rarely <laughs> going to win the ball, and then there's an extra man committed up the pitch. Um, if there, there's a plus one in behind because when they go to press the keeper, say Hoyland presses Flecken, Rashford presses Collins, Ganacho presses Vandenberg, Casemiro has to then deal with Norgard and Damsgaard, um, Fernandez presses Pinnock. There, there is space on on the right because. They basically commit too many players up the pitch, yeah. Uh, with one, with one next to the keeper, and then it creates a plus one in behind. What, sure. what should happen um, is Hoyland shouldn't press the keeper; he should drop back in. So instead of there being a plus one with Casemiro, um, Hoyland is then covering the passing lane to him, and and they right. should well. So they sat off in the second half, but that was they sit off when. They don't when when the opposition doesn't go to the keeper, but I think they mm. should sit off. They should press high, but sit off and don't press the keeper when the ball goes to him. If that right, hold sense. something like this, right? That's like exactly right. That's something, right. Something so like so, that so you can cut the angle, even though you know because as you're right. Like like let's say Pinnock has it here. You're saying the point is when they make this pass back to Flecken, don't if press he the rushes keeper. out. Yes, so you've you've created this problem because now. Erickson's going to be real fast to if he's yeah. going to try to get up there and cover some of these these lanes. And I and I get that. I get that. But you know, it, it is interesting. Like someone was pointing out here in the, in the comments, like when we we did, you know, like when Mason Mount is there, obviously his intense energy gives you more probably leeway, right? And it was the same thing, for example, when Fred was there in, in Eric's first season. You well, know, his I and his. Like that, I feel like that press in general was better though. It, it, yeah. it was better. It wasn't. There was nobody pressing the keeper. There was nobody going. And that that's probably to true too. Keeper. Yeah, that's probably true too. I'm, do I'm you looking... think that? Do you think it's instructional? I, it, you know, in your opinion, it happens I so do. much. It feels like it must be. But at the same time, it, it does often feel like Bruno is. You know, like we might be settled in, and then out of the blue, it's like 
you know, I know there's pressing triggers and things, and I'm just wondering, like, is is this all instructional or is, is there also the possibility that Bruno's reading the game a little bit wrong and thinking, hey, this is a good time to rush out in this press and trap them, right? Because, look, I could understand it. Like, you know, Flecken is getting the ball over here and you feel like you have a trap then I understand why you might do it at a certain point in time where you can cut off all the angles and trap them and force them to go over the top where you can win it with your center backs. But it seems like that we'll, we will kind of be sitting and then just out of the blue, Bruno starts going and, and, yeah, and, I, and everybody, and we don't really tend to step up that well either. When that happens, they, 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 it opens up these gaps and not everybody tends to follow. And it's hard for me to tell is that, is it is it all instructional? Is it half Bruno? Is it half instructions? Like, I, what is the answer here? I personally think it's instructional. Okay. Um, this is, I don't know if people can see this, but look at the, this is a lot more tighter. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't, know I, if, I don't think that's good for people to see. Can they see it? Where, where, where is that one? Where is that one? If you, if you could send it to me, I could put it on the screen. Yeah, sure. It's, um, it's the one against Tottenham. You want to send me it in a in a DM and I'll open it up uh, and then I'll put it on the yeah but 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 anyway it's um I'll literally send it to you now awesome it's uh it's the example of when we had Fred actually oh cool okay good 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 but I I personally think it's instructional okay. um. I, I think that he, what he's trying to do is press higher and win the ball higher. It's just there's always – there always seems to be a plus one in behind. Mm. Come. I I think it's pretty bold that he he has gone to do this. But against Tottenham sort of two seasons ago as, comp as compared to, to this game. So this was the – I think this it was one of the best games under Ten Hag. Remember Tottenham at home? Yeah, yes, I do. Uh, I think yes. it was against Antonio Conte's team. And um, they completely throttled them. They completely throttled them. But that was not that was not a press to win the ball high. That was more mm. a press to, we're going to press high, but we're going to make sure that there is no way that they're going to get out. And when teams can't get out because you, you put, they press high, They'll start to just punch the ball down the wing, and that's when you can. That's when you can retrieve the ball. There I was get a it. Of times there was a couple of times where it tightened up against Brentford, where this happened. So they sat yeah. off. Fernandez and Hoyland sat off and didn't press the keeper. It, it's how the goal happened. It's how the goal happened against uh, the, the Hoyland goal. They, right. they sat off. They closed the passing angles down down to Yanel and Damsgaard. Eriksson finally hit Presto. Um, got tied to Norgard. Fernandez dropped deeper and was on Yanel, and Casemiro was on uh, Damsgaard. So that means you've got a 3v3 in midfield. Um, Ganacho pressed the fullback on whichever side he was on. The Brentford fullback sort of kicked it down the wing. Martinez sensed this, pushed up, got the ball, um, played it through to Fernandez that he flicked it, and then Hoyland scored. So it, it was an example of what can happen when the press is tighter. Just stop pressing the goalkeeper. I'm begging you. Stop right, right. And so, and press, press on the side to wherever the ball goes, because mm, when the ball goes yeah. to the side, that's and, and you press high, you can cover each player. Right, because there's less it. angles, right? So you can just kind yeah, of trap that, it better. Yeah, control the team and, and cause a turnover because they don't have anywhere to go. They yeah. don't have anywhere to go apart from punching the ball down the wing. Um, and they did this against Tottenham two seasons ago. I think it's it's in the um, it's in one of the sections of the thread if you want to get it up. Yes, yes. Hold it here. I'll, let me show this. I can do this. It's just a just a tab here. Yeah. If you, if you, it's one of the like last tweets. If you go to in, it starts with in general the second half was better. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I think there's an example against Brentford as well that I've just sent you. Hold on. In 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 the build up to the goal, might be a little bit more. Easier. No, that's it's 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 interesting because you know, like in in looking at this, obviously they're not really covering the keeper. Basuma exactly. has it here. 
The only out ball is uh, like to the opposite wing, which is harder because there's three or four United players there. Right. Right. And so it's it's like, yeah, I mean, they're man to man kind of across here. You can see, you know, the three man kind of waving his hand, but Bruno could be getting to him. But Basuma also has to turn around and, and Fred is running at him to to close that angle down pretty quickly. It's interesting. If you want to, if you want to just, I've just sent you the the one on Brentford. If you can get that one up, because this is yeah. that one. That one is the that one is what leads to the actual goal. Yes, yes, perfect. And then we can talk about that one. Right. There we go. Look at that. Hang that in the Louvre. Right. So, so now, so now what I would, what I would ask, you know, about this in, in general, which makes a lot of sense is it's like, okay, the two different types of press that we can do from time to time, right? There's, there's oftentimes it seems like where you're saying where we have a lot of flaws and weaknesses in our pressing structure is when we're just trying to, to like, they're just settled, spread out, they're in position, the ball's in the middle and we're just, for some reason, pressing to try to win the ball yeah. in, in that position. And that is where we tend to open up holes. They kick it into the midfield and they run through the midfield because they just have so much open space, like we've shown where they have that extra man. Whereas in instances like this, where either, like, let's say we lose the ball in a corner, then it's a count, you know, you can counter press, right? Where it's, it's uh, you, you know, it's rather than setting up, you're, you're pressing after winning the ball to try to win it back quickly. But they're in a in a or you or you let them move the ball by pressing in the right structure, letting them move the ball to the corner to a wide area where then you can trap them essentially, which is what you're saying. This is what this is. We've trapped them in this in this wide area. Um, you know, we've we've trapped them in this in this wide area, and that means we can cover basically everything in mm. in there because. The, the, I, you know what you obviously we can't see, but I guess the only pass here that would be possible is someone like way down here to do some huge switch to, which they're never going to get the time to, because there's that's, surely that's a. Not gonna happen because look how yeah. close Ganacho is to the footballer. Like it's that's, not. Yeah, uh, agreed. Like that's impossible for them to do, right? Or it's extremely unlikely that they could pull that off because there's a free man down here, but it doesn't matter. They're not yeah. going to get it to them at that point, and then that's how you can. You know, essentially win the ball, and, Which is and then you have it leads to the goal. It leads to yeah. the back. If you want to just yep. go back to the to the slide there, yep. The the key thing here is um, Ericsson's on Yanel, Fernandez is on. I think it's Nogard. Casemiro is on Damsgaard. Normally, in the in the other press, in the in the images that we saw before, when they're pressing high up to the goalkeeper, Damsgaard is free, or Nogard is free, or Yanel is free. Ericsson is finally pushing up, but the press is good because whichever side the fullback, whichever side the ball goes to, whichever fullback it goes to, you, you look how squeezed the pitch is there. Um, mm. Even the short pass behind, Hoyland is covering uh, the pass to Collins. So that's that's completely covering Brentford's passing options. Yep. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. It's so it's frustrating because it's, it's like, I just, I feel week in week out even when united do well and they win it's like it's right in front of you the results are right in front of right. you right you, you're you're watching these things happen <laughs> and you're going, okay, but then we don't do it again no. right we'll we'll go back to pressing the key because what you're saying is look i i think i get it it's pretty simple by kind of sitting off here you say all right well let's let them pass it out here or something like this right we're not sitting off but not pressing the keeper when they move it, what happened, as, as you could see there, is uh, this is all that happened. Then it's like, you know, they're all coming closer to try to get to try to help Vandenberg in that situation. I think it was still Vandenberg at that point in time. Um, Hoyland comes across because he's kind of between the two, the two center backs at that time. He comes across. Rashford comes across, and he's here. I think Pinnock is Pinnock still is way down here, him. right? And Rashford is kind of in between. No, Pinnacle, I think Pinnock was like across there as well. If you want to put Pinnock and Rashford next to each other. Yeah, I'm just looking at the image. One, two, three, four, five. I can see five of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. wait, no, no, oh. You're right. you're right. no, yeah, I think he's over here, right? Like he's still... 
he's still saying staying in, in this part, but there's nowhere to go. And yes. they haven't put themselves at risk because, like we said, the only thing they could do is try this, which is practically impossible, and nobody's going to do it. Um, well, oh, well, is, even if yeah. they try to do that, they're very close to their own goal. So they're yeah. basically pass, p- passing it across their own box at this point. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I think another reason of why this press was tied they, would, they wouldn't want to do, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But an, another reason why the why the press was tighter was because, and it's again, it's eye-opening listening to all the interviews from the players. Gamacho was like, it came from anger. We were angry about um, Bloodgate. We were angry that right. uh, that Delict had dried blood on his head and they took him off. Um, right. Right when Brent got a corner. That's why we were more intense and that's why we got up for the game more and it's like... So they just tried you harder. Can't do like... It. You can't do it. <laughs> like they just tried harder but that's the thing right and that was what i was looking at is like even with some of the flaws sometimes it feels like if they were just a step quicker a step more intense a little bit more committed to certain actions we a wouldn't have yeah then we wouldn't have these issues because like like the structure can can help or hurt right for sure but I think, like, if you took Liverpool's, they take a lot of risks in their press. If they weren't so intense, I guess it wouldn't work, would it? I mean, you'd, you'd still see flaws at, at, at times. And, and that's part of the, the thing I go back and forth on there from a personnel standpoint. As I look at, you know, Liverpool have made a habit under Klopp and, and, and it's continued under slot so far of their midfield has been, like, hard hard runners no mm. matter what they they they're like yeah. they've got to do hard you've got to have hard hard runners in the midfield you know and i would say that of all of them they're very very hard i mean obviously when it was henderson and milner you know people didn't see that as like this title winning midfield before klopp you know got them going but they were really hard runners hard workers and they ended up being just brutal to play against not saying that's the only way to go about it, right? But but obviously their press, which has always been very intense, would be weak if if you didn't have those hard runners in. And and so my 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 take on it from from a Ten Hag perspective is like there's there's a couple of ways you can go about this, and we seem to go about it the worst possible way at times, which is that if we commit to a really risky press, like where we're pressing the keeper and we're trying to like really cut those angles down and force an error, then you have to play your most energetic midfielders. You can't play Christian Eriksen in that position because he's always going to be two steps behind it because he's just not that fast. Yeah. He's not that quick. He's just, it's never going to work. If you're going to play Eriksen, then play a much more conservative thing, a, a more conservative style of pressing where, you know, he doesn't like, like you've Do said, the st- off. Do the thing off. yeah, sit off a bit and just let them have it in the wide areas if they need to like let them get to the wide areas and don't try to win it you know up here one of the things that i personally think of ten hog which is which is it's it's sort of like a domino effect of flaws right is we still score most of our goals in transition right we still score most of our goals pretty like in, in, in a quick moment or something like that more than we do in a settled possession. And some people have said this before, and I've, I've wondered if this is kind of part of it is um, if you can press with your forwards really high, then obviously if you do win the ball back, you can score quickly. You can score really fast because your forwards are like in their box. They're ready. They're all of that. And the press is kind of used to attack rather than it is really for defensive purposes. So it's sort of like a gamble. Can we win the ball high and score quickly versus are we trying to pre- stop the other team? Mm. And, 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 um, and, and yeah, it's, it, it's, it's just a balance. It's a balance here of like, how do we, how do we get this right? And and the other factor, as I said, in terms of my thought process on the long term, because this is what blows my mind. Okay, okay, Darnish, and and I understand that people have different ideas over the player, specifically like a a Manuel Ugarte. Are you still there? Oh, cool. Um, yeah. But you know, for example, Ugarte is 
his best strength is his energy. <laughs> in a similar way to Fred, he is a monster in the pressing and counter-pressing in the opposition half. He is huge at it. He's so good at it that if you're going to be taking these big risks, let's say, and you're going to be pressing the keeper and you're going to be running all up in here, if you, I'm not saying it should be entirely individual based, right? We know that that has its risks and its flaws, but if you are going to do this, just play Manuel Ugarte because if there's a player who has a chance, a chance, right, of making up that ground quickly, of covering those gaps, of of getting in there to win the ball high, well, that's what he's good at. That's what he specializes in is covering you in those kind of uh, problems areas and in in helping you pinch it. I mean, he does it for Bielsa, right, in Uruguay yeah. right now. Yeah. Every break, they take they have a very risky press. We know that about Bielsa, right? It's always very risky. And it's very open. We, we could see it because when we played Leeds with, with Solskjaer, right, yeah. we used McTominay as this exact thing. We used him as an extra midfielder to run through their team and go score. It was almost exactly what's happening to us. We were doing to Leeds under Bielsa. Um, but Ugarte is in that system there. And it's like, if you're going to do this, he has to play. You know, he has to. You know, because you're going to have to have him or Mason Mount on the pitch covering those gaps like nobody else can. Um, it, it, so it, it's, it's, always, it's always odd, and I feel like a lot of it comes from trying to, to score goals very quickly. But then ironically, like as, as you did point out, when we were less crazy with the press, we ended up scoring from it anyway <laughs> because – we were able to win the ball in a much more intelligent fashion um, by trapping them instead of needing just excess energy and running to try to 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 luck into winning a ball high. So, yeah, it, it's interesting. I know we, we've spent a lot of time talking about the press, but it's kind of like, to some degree, it's it's almost like the start and end of of everything for United, right? Because yeah. all these defensive yeah. issues about our midfield start with the press and and it seems yeah. like that's the whole problem it causes a lot of issues um but it can work as well if they want it to and if they do the right things yeah um, the hope is that what they went to in the second half which was more consistent is a lot more of it's just i feel yeah. like i see this team try and do different things so many times yep um it's it's who he is he's a very he changes things uh, a, a lot even probably when they don't need to be changed yep yep agreed and so let me ask you one more then you know just to get to to at least um you know one more question um on this so we've talked about obviously the press we kind of know how we perform almost everywhere else it had, a lot of other things haven't changed altogether that much one difference that was noted against i think against Aston Villa as well as against um uh what was it uh, as well as against Brentford at least for me this was this was notable is that for for the for the earlier games we we saw this when it was Dallo on the left side um he would be tucking in always right to right here um and Whoever was here, which was usually Lissandra Martinez, was getting really isolated. And in the last few games, we've not really done that. Now, I know Dallo inverted, but mm. it wasn't here, right? It wasn't no. deep. He was it was higher up. It was as an attacking run like type of thing here where uh, – let me just swap them – where um, we still kept our two midfielders kind of – deeper at that point in time we still had two mids right we still had two midfielders deep in the midfield and then alternatively because he was doing this Rashford was actually dropping in a bit more to cover defensively so it didn't expose us in the same way um and I think that that's a positive like even whether it's keeping your fullbacks wide or if you're going to invert them, inverting them in this kind of way we did with Dallow, where it made an overload, but it was also almost like a 
a singular instance, right? Rather than a settled possession thing, he would he would move and Rashford would rotate in like one yeah. movement to throw the opposition off rather than him just sitting here the whole yeah. you know the whole game in possession and he'd, he'd and, come and, deeper and drag and drag a player with him right so so they didn't it didn't uh, so it moved them rather than when you're just tucking in and just doing that and just sitting there they don't really have to adjust to it you're not dragging anybody they're not changing yeah. their setup and Andres would do this a little bit too by the way like yes if it, if yeah and then luckily right. for us, you go back into attack, which is where you want him. So we saw that, like, so we saw in some instances, Rashford was almost defending in a fullback position when Dalla would make this run if we did turn a ball over or they were attacking. So we still kind of at least had four in defense almost at all times. And it seems like that was a lot better in the second half, especially that kept us, even in the first half, we weren't terrible at this, where at least in the back line, we were more compact. So even when our press was poor at times um, and they were running through the midfield, we still, we weren't so exposed like in the back, right? Like in, in, I noticed, you know, in, in, uh, in Buemo, especially when he would get the ball over here, he wasn't like Martinez and then he's through on goal. There was, mm -hmm. you know, Mar it was, it was Martinez as a left back actually, where you still had a left-sided center back to support him rather than Martinez on his own with your other center back way over yeah. in no man's land. And 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 it it they were they had a lot less joy that way in in getting into us even after they made it through our midfield. That that's how I saw it anyway. I think um I think that the, the second half especially as well. So the, the first the first half they did they did keep the majority of of, of the ball but yep. when 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 Brentford played through the press, what tended to happen was like either Delict or Martinez or Evans was just very good at making challenges yes, inside the box too, or yes. going down the wing. It would stop. It would stop a stop an attack. And then in the yep. second half, they were United were really good at City are really good at like I know people and me included say it like oh they've got a little more, they've got more problems this year. Um, with counter attacks, got a lot more problems, but that's it's not it's not pick it's not um it's not nitpicking. It's still City. If you watch yeah. that first half against Wolves, it was relentless because what they do when an attack breaks down, um, so say a City attack and the attack breaks down, Wolves defender gets it, they quickly re retrieve the ball back. That's what United were doing to some degree in the second half. So when um, I think there was one particular counter attack where I think Damsgaard played it to more. And I was surprised it was Ericsson, but Ericsson ran back, retrieved the ball. And then two minutes later, the same thing happened. Um, Brentford got on the counter-attack. Fernandez retrieved the ball this time. So you can keep the pressure up and you can keep um, grabbing the attacking now if you're quickly retrieving the ball after uh, you've lost it, which is, right. which, is a, which is a defensive transition. If you can keep preventing the def a defensive transition by retrieving the ball, you're going to keep um, the opposition pinned back. So that that's what that's what I felt made them more compact in the second half. And this is by not doing anything defensively. Really, it's just about quickly retrieving the ball, which is what United should be doing, right? United should be the team in most games that are grabbing it by the scruff of their necks. They should be the ones taking the tempo. They should be the yeah. ones relentlessly attacking and they did that better in the second half again all of this is like it was better it was better in the second half i go do it again yep okay good so then to kind of summarize this so what would be like if you could give three things here that potentially we could build on because i'm trying to be more positive with all of this if there are three things <laughs> that we could build on right um because i think that's what it's always been about we've seen good things but we don't see them continue. We see it go back to the things that didn't work rather than continuing the things that did. One, I think you've said many times, is is in the pressing, like specifically that point of not pressing the keeper, but let them get it to the wide areas and then trap them that way with your press rather than creating this extra man in the midfield thing. Is that is that would that be fair? Would it be one of the things you for sure think would be an improvement? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, that the the sitting off and stop 
stop pressing so high or specific, specifically stop pressing the keeper is, is one of the improvements. Number two, um, United have only scored, I think, is it seven goals this season? Yeah. Yep. Seven, yeah. It's still quite it's low <laughs> in the league, yeah. Amount, and I know Garnacho has missed basically two open nets. But <laughs> it's... And I'm, listen, it's fantastic that they that they tweaked it in the second half and, and that brought them more joy. But the overall improvement needs to be this team needs to score more goals. If that means you need to change things each time in the second half, I don't think that's that's going to work. But you need to keep changing things uh, like the way Ten Hag did against, against teams, I think. In-game changes are huge now. You need to see more of that. You need to see more of getting the ball to to your Rashfords, your Ganachos, because they're not yeah. they're not um, these these players are good enough to create a moment out of something, which is what Rashford did, right? That that yes. pinpoint. Club, you need to get the ball to him more in that half. Um, if you don't have, if your style of play isn't working, or if your build up isn't really working, you need to change it, and that's exactly what what uh, Ten Hag did in the second half. So. The goals thing in general are are, are, an, are an improvement because you need to then get your best players into advanced positions, which is what it, which is what exactly he did. So I want to see more of that. Right. Yeah. Just to add on to that, from from my perspective, you know, we had twenty three shots, but only like one point three eight xg, which is pretty bad for the number yeah. of shots that we made. And um, I think Hoyland had only two, one in each half. And we know how good a finisher he is, right? Easily the best finisher on the at the club, given the goal that he scored. I think Rashford had two shots, and he didn't get his first one until the 84th minute. And we saw in the first, like, I think it was five games, he had zero shots on target, or he had one. Uh, Southampton was the first time he had a shot on target in the whole season. Mm -hmm. And then he had, like, two more games after that without getting a shot. And um, that is, I think, a... Something major to sort out. How do we get Hoyland and Rashford more shots? Get them the ball more, and you know where they can actually get on on target. Because um, I would like to see us do a lot less of the long shots. One of the things that does irritate me a lot is when we do build it up well, and we're in the positions. We took like eight shots from outside the box. Yeah, Garnacho, Casemiro, Bruno. I think it was like eight shots, and maybe nine. It's too many. They're not even good ones, you know. They're not like it's like in a perfect yeah. angle and you're ready to go and you're gonna score it. They they tend to be like, you know, rush of blood and you just you just shoot. And that would be one thing I think that in general, I'd rather they recycle it, allow us to push it up more, get the forwards in the box, get more men in the box, and get a better shot out of that opportunity than. Um, and I think that would help us create more chances with fewer shots, which I think is okay. You know, you don't need 23 shots a game to create goal scoring opportunities. Um, so yeah, I would agree with that. And, uh, and that, that's how I would see that as well. What else would you say if there's anything else you'd, you'd like to see us do? It's a good question. Um, I think just keep so mine is, is Ugarte <laughs> because I, I, I like, if we want to be an aggressive <laughs> team, I want to I mean, see us, be an aggressive team, you know. Yeah, I guess, I guess what he's using Ten Hag is the pressing, like mm -hmm. you said, the pressing. And then number two is he's it's a more it's a more possession based build up this season, right? Yep. It's not um it's not the chaos ball of last season. At least he's got rid of that. Yep. So keep continuing with the pressing, but sit off and don't press the keeper, stifle teams, and then in terms of the build up. Keep it possession based. Uh, keep it patient and wait for the holes to appear. Yes, I agree with that. They found a solution in the second half. They absolutely found a solution. Just that little tweak of, mood, of moving Dallow inside, or even the tactic throughout the game of directing to Hoyland, him retrieving it, and then bringing your other players into the game, or trying the Onana kicking it over the top of six Brentford players, um, either to Rashford or Dallow, and getting it to, to the best attackers. Um, because then you're doing it's it's serving its purpose of okay we've got either either through the build up or aerially 
We've got it through to our best attacking players, and now they can do their jobs up front. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, well, um, obviously we have a, an interesting one against against uh, against Jose Mourinho oh, yeah. yeah. tomorrow. Um, the the team, in a sense, picks itself, which I think is rather interesting, because the only three healthy midfielders you have are uh, because Bruno Fernandez has a red card. Is uh, is Ericsson, Casemiro, and Ugarte, and I actually mm -hmm. think that has potential to be very successful. When we look at kind of the setup, you get two really hard workers. You get Ericsson in a less um, a less ground covering position potentially. Out of position as well. Yeah, less of a position where he has to cover people. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, we've got we've got Ugarte and we've got Casemiro and future Casemiro. Yeah. Uh, Cas Casemiro with a bit. We more should pressure. be able to win a battle, and especially when we're playing against like a team that has Fred and. In there, we're gonna need the energy, so I think it's a, a good time for it. Even I just I was struggling to sleep last night, just just thinking of Fred pressing the life out of our defense and then giving it away. In the same way where we we got pressed against Liverpool, um, I think that's another point that I would I would like to see us improve. Is we're better against teams when they press us. We're, we're we're better against teams in the in the lower half when they press us. I don't know how we'll be against better presses. Right, right. We'll see yeah, as the game right. gets on. But yeah, team picks itself. No Fernandez, Casemiro, Eriksen, Ugarte. There's no Mainu either. So yep. again, it's kind of kind of the sum of its parts. I just I just think it's wild that like, we're back to this Casemiro and Eriksen combination, even though we, yeah. labeled, we labeled that there was problems with both and we've tried to replace both, we're bringing Mainu in. We signed Ugarte. Now we're back with Casemiro and Eriksen. Yeah, uh, we've got to move on from it somehow, though. We have to because it's not going to be to do it in the future. At the very least, Casemiro had a good game against Brentford. He did, yeah. Eriksen has had a decent six games. So yep. as long as I'd like working, to see him, him rotate with Bruno more rather than playing with him. You know, I think that that would help. You know, playing in like we're going to see tomorrow in a, in a less defensive responsibility position i think would be would be better i think he'll be even better in that role i mean we won 7-0 with this midfield by the way uh it was casemiro uh, ugarte and Eriksen, right against um barnsley yeah and we won 7-0 and they were excellent and in in and i thought Eriksen was i mean look it's a lower opposition it's an easier yeah. team well, in barnsley but Eriksen was was fantastic in that 10 mm -hmm. role like in the actual 10 role where that was his job the whole game. I thought it was fantastic with two hard workers behind him. So I, it has potential there to where you could you could work something. And I'm hoping we see another good result with it. And Ten Hag looks at it and goes, you know what? Two really hard workers behind a 10 rather than trying to fit a second 10 into the team. Maybe we yeah. maybe this is gonna work. You know, maybe this is the route yeah. to to success. So I'm hoping well, it, it works. I mean, well. we, we've got a big test then. We can yep. we we'll, we'll see more on on Thursday. Exactly. All right. Well, we're gonna leave it there. And and yes, as I said before, uh, obviously we're recording this on 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 our watch along platform on Big Up. But you, if you're watching this on YouTube now, you know, feel free to use the link below and come join for watch alongs. And we'll do the recording again live on here next week and keep working with it so we can use the tactics board and do the things that we're doing and and we can answer questions and and things like that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, thank you all for, for who are here watching live and thank you for everybody, uh, on YouTube for, for watching his videos. Make sure to give uh, Darnish a follow, obviously tag him when I post a video on YouTube, I've already tagged him on the, on the post to, to come watch us live. And, um, that's all I've got. Anything you want to say, Darnish? Otherwise we'll end it there. No, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Bazimon. Um, I promise next time we'll, we'll cover some questions. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll get more into the the live portion and and interacting uh, as we as as we go ahead uh, doing this more often. So thank, thank you all you, for for hanging out, for tuning in. And um, I want I want to wake up on Friday with no 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 bloody revisionism on on my timeline. None of this. Oh, Mourinho was all right. Maybe we could have got Fred. <laughs> Maybe we could have <laughs> Shut them up, all right? It's a very difficult stadium to go to. Take this thing out of the game. Get in and get out and don't embarrass yourselves. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what we all hope. All right, thank you all for watching. Appreciate you. See you later.